<laughs> Why is that so scary? Okay. I'm going to close my door really quick. Hello, YouTube. Um, I love YouTube. I love social media. But I have, like, thoughts and feelings that I want to put out there that a lot of, like, family and friends follow, follow me on. I'm just not ready. I'm not ready. But YouTube is the place where no one follows me. Well, very few people do, and those who do, I feel great about them seeing things. So here we are on YouTube. And I just want to tell you, I don't know, maybe stories. Shall we tell stories on YouTube? Let's, let's tell you the story of how my husband and I got together. So, also, this is not a makeup tutorial. So if any of you are wondering if you should uh, write down anything I do, the answer is don't. Because <laughs> your girl has no game. She got no makeup game. And you're gonna know it immediately. If you do makeup stuff, this is not a makeup tutorial, okay? Um, okay, so the story starts a long time ago, in 2017. 2017, Tori was an absolutely different Tori. She had just gotten out of a relationship where she was devastated, absolutely devastated. A boy broke her heart and she had just found out that she has anxiety, okay? So she goes to therapy for the first time and she's like, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, like I started dating this guy and I started getting anxiety. And the therapist was like, you sweet angel. <laughs> anxiety doesn't just suddenly show up, which was news to me. I didn't know that. So like anxiety can be shown in other ways. For me, I could never sit through movies. I was constantly thinking, 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 thinking. I was very hypervigilant, very, very aware of what people thought, what people did, how people responded to me. And turns out all of those things were just a little bit of anxiety. Anyway, so I meet this guy. For the sake of the story, let's call him Aaron because there's no other thing to call him because it's really important for the story. And you'll know why I call him Aaron later. <laughs> so Aaron is everything I thought I wanted and he was cool he was cute he was like I, I really enjoyed his family and we're gonna skip this part most of these parts of the story because it's irrelevant uh it's relevant but irrelevant and like very quickly, our relationship turned really codependent. Um, I really codependent and really just really unhealthy. Unhealthy being that like I was incredibly codependent. I think he was as well. I wasn't his first choice of someone that he wanted to be with, but inadvertently we ended up together anyway. And whether that be in a dating capacity, a friendship capacity, um, over the course of three years, this is how things were. And it was a horrible time for me, like love and compassion to former Tori because she didn't know what she was doing and love and compassion to Aaron because I don't think he really knew what he was doing either. That makes me want to cry actually. Um, so... 20, this is 2019, sorry. So for three years, this is going on. But in 2019, we break up. Well, we break up our friendship because we weren't even dating. We were just spending a lot of time together. We break up our friendship and I just get the strongest. I'm sitting in a meeting one day and I get the strongest impression that one day 
Aaron would come back and things would work out. And he was dating, he started dating another girl at the time that I had no reason to worry about this person. For the sake of the story, we'll call her Sarah. That's not her name, but we'll call her Sarah. And this was super strong impression. This was something that like, because I feel like I'm a deeply spiritual person, deeply religious person. Like, I feel like I couldn't deny this, but also like, I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, this makes no sense to me at all. So <laughs> I go along and I'm just deeply confused about this because I, I feel like I have kind of refined over my life, the ability to discern and interpret and understand when God might be speaking to me. And so I felt pretty strongly that he was, but my, the message that I was given did not match what was actually happening in real life. So we continue on. And I, would, I just talked to God and I was like, hey, if this is real, help me to continue to feel that it's real, to know that, that it's real, <laughs> not me grasping on this sink for dear life. Also, not me not looking at the right place. Forgive me. Um, and over the course of like the next six months, every time I like asked about it, every time I questioned it, I would get like this reaffirmation that it was real. I felt new promptings, new, new pieces of information came to me. Like he would see me one day because I feel like Pre-2020 Tori was like incredibly anxious, very codependent, relationships weren't healthy, they were quite toxic, and um, he would see that I had changed a lot because I did a lot of therapy. Shout out to EMDR. Um, love that. We'll talk about that at a, at a, in a different video. But I like that he would see me, and this goes on for months and months and months. And I'm just utterly confused because meanwhile, this boy doesn't want to talk to me. He doesn't want anything to do with me. He, we actually become friends again after he stopped dating this girl. And like in my mind, I was like, okay, well, we're going to date because I had felt this impression. I'd felt this feeling. Meanwhile, in his mind, no, we weren't. And we were never going to date again. So it was a really, really difficult time. And by June of 2020, I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. I keep trying to like insert myself into this guy's life and he wants nothing to do with me. It doesn't make any sense. It Like none of this makes any sense. And so in June of 2020, we stopped talking. Like for the last time. And... I just was left with this fallout where I was like, I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't understand. I tried so hard to be part of this guy's life. I feel like I was following this prompting. It doesn't make any sense. Like nothing in my life makes sense. And what was interesting is those promptings, even though we had stopped talking, they continued to happen. So very significant experiences that I had in August. I had the next February where I just like felt impressed, like, Hey, God keeps his promises. And, you know, just very strong, just even sacred experiences that I had that like literally made no sense. And so I had to move forward in my life, which was hard to do, <laughs> but I had to move forward in my life with nothing making any sense because I was like, it's almost like every time I asked, I would still get the same answer. The Aaron would come back, things would work out, not to worry about this person. And, but like the reality of my situation did not match what was actually going on. And I felt super confused at one point. I was like, maybe I'm like being deceived. Maybe I'm literally <laughs> listening to Satan because nothing else makes sense. You ready for some bronzer <laughs> again not a makeup tutorial oh shoot she's done she's gone too far <laughs> um so i try to move forward i buy a house i actually ended up buying a house 
like miraculously buying a house in the same town that this guy lived in, which was horrible because I was constantly reminded of where he lived and all the things. I would see him around town, which was awful, an awful experience. And I, these, he started dating the same girl again. He, this, they've now dated, I don't know, 25 times, more like three, but maybe four. <laughs> and um, so they start dating again. I'm like, I don't, I just, I don't understand my life. This makes no sense. And so I just continually tried to move forward. And it honestly bought, brought me like a deep distrust in God, a deep distrust in my own feelings, a deep distrust in inspiration and being able to discern what's right, what's wrong. And like through it all, I knew what I felt. I knew what I heard. I knew, like I knew it. I could literally like bring to my remembrance all of these things, all of these feelings. But as far as like how my life was actually playing out and what the reality was, this was not my reality. So insert Tori absolute faith crisis <laughs> in 2022. I really just like went through the emotions. I'm like a regular churchgoer. I am like pretty dedicated to my spirituality, as I said before. And I just like lost my fire and lost my fervor because honestly, it was so painful to be part of an organization of people who were so fervent in this God that they had believed in and that was so kind to them. And I felt like he was being so unkind to me because I was like, I know who you are. Like, I, I know you're kind, I know you're loving, and I know you're wonderful. But like, what is, like, the fact that this, like, specific piece of information won't go away, won't get out of my head, won't leave me alone. And like... I have anxiety, like, but I know what recurring thoughts are and I know like what spiritual impressions are. I know the difference between like thinking of something like literally being manic, not manic, that's not a good word, literally being like, what is this word, hmm? about it versus being calm about it and, and receiving deep impressions. Oh, I have a red dress on. What blush? More neutrally. Hmm. Let's go with this one. I cannot figure out liquid blush for the life of me. Selena Gomez apparently makes beautiful formulas, but somebody send me a tutorial because I can't. I actually can't do it. Okay, so fast forward. It's it's the end of 2022. What year is it? 2023. It's the end of 2022. So this is going on for two years. I'm feeling very apathetic, very unhappy, very hurt, but just trying to move forward in my life because I didn't know what else to do. And I, it's the end of 2022. And like, I just got to this place where I'm like, I have to accept that for some reason, God wanted me to believe that things were going to work out with this guy. For some reason, that was important and it's time to move on. And even though like I would say that it's time to move on, it still would be like, mm, but it's still true, Tori. But I just, I was like, I just have to move on. So I started kind of like delving into spiritual practices again, even though it's really hard and really painful. And I just tried to move forward with my life <laughs> as much as I could. And at one point throughout like the process, I had this like thought like, ooh, could this be about somebody else? some other Aaron. And I was like, no, there's no way God would do that. That would be literally insane. That would be absolutely insane. But would it? But actually would it? So <laughs> end of 2022, I, throughout this experience, I've lived with multiple roommates and one of these roommates dated a guy named Aaron. She dated a guy named Aaron and this guy's cool. He was really nice, liked him, thought he was great. I actually had met him a long time ago. Um, so we were acquaintances prior to them ever being together and, but thought nothing of it. And they break up and he started coming over to our house just because my roommate was super friendly and inviting people to things. And he was like watching movies at our house. And one day we're like watching a movie and I was like, 
am I into this guy? That would be weird because he dated my old roommate. He was friends with my ex. It was like, there was a lot of things, <laughs> bad relationship hygiene. <laughs> and we just started getting to know each other and really enjoying each other's company. And like in a very short amount of time, I was like, I think I'm into this guy. This guy named Aaron. I'm like, this is weird. What if it is? What if all of my impressions were about this guy, about a different guy? And <laughs> one day we were having a conversation and about like our past exes, people we've dated. And, and he was like, oh yeah, like I almost married this girl named Sarah. Do you remember this impression that I had that I didn't need to worry about Sarah? Aaron would come back, things would work out, as in he had been in my life and he had come back into my life. That things would work out, like I didn't need to worry about this other girl, that one day I would be grateful for her. I felt that impression as well, that he would see me and this man has seen me. Spoiler alert, we are married. <laughs> me and the other Aaron are married and it is so fascinating because I feel like this Aaron number one was almost a symbol of all the things that Aaron number two would actually be. And for some reason, Aaron number two couldn't be in my life in that time. I wish he could. I feel like for me, I definitely needed to have a therapy journey. I feel like I'm more well equipped to be in a relationship, even though it took, how long is it from 2017 to now 2023 when we got married? It took six years, which is insane. My first impression was in 2019 that he would come back into my life. But it has honestly worked out so perfectly. There are a lot of nuances to this story, obviously. Like, I feel like I am <laughs> the poster child for the story that you don't want to hear when you're so hopeful that things will work out in your life. But like, I feel like I am a testament and my experience is a testament to the fact that one, like God does keep his promises and he can keep his promises. Two, I feel like God gives you what you need in the moment to get you to where you need to be. So for some reason, I needed to think it was the other Aaron to get to me to where I needed to be. AKA, I was in so much pain, I had to seek out therapy. I had to become more whole as a person to, emotionally and and to become a more holistic person um I feel like he will do what he needs to do to get you to where he needs to be and for some reason I need it to be there like I don't understand all of it honestly I don't wish that upon anyone I don't wish like upon anyone this feeling that it's supposed to work out with someone and it's not actually that person like because you know, you can misinterpret things. You can hear things the way you want to hear them. You can hear things differently than how they're supposed to be. But I also, I believe that God knows what you're going to do with the information that he has given you. And if he gives you that information, you kind of just go with it until he gives you something else, right? It was really hard. <laughs> and I feel like I am barely coming out of the hard and coming to like, love and adore my God once more because it was such a difficult experience for me overall. And I am so incredibly grateful to him because I am so happy to be with this Aaron 2.0, who is just the most lovely, wonderful, kind, smart, hardworking individual. Aaron 1.0, I would not have been happy. <laughs> I know I wouldn't have been happy, but Aaron 2.0 has changed my life for the better. And for him, I would go through it again. For anyone else, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> I, I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. But I, I, yeah, I'm still sorting through the mess. But I know that it was always supposed to be him. Now, I know that now. <laughs> That's my story.